Director with me is the Vice Chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Democratic Virginia Senator uh, Mark Warner. Thanks so much for coming in this morning. We appreciate it. So this is the third terrorist attack in the UK in the last 10 weeks. Uh, they've claimed the lives of 34 innocent victims. What can you tell us? What do we know about the perpetrators of, of last night's attack? And is there any risk to Americans right now beyond the normal risk? Well, I received a brief this morning from our National Center, Counterterrorism Center, and basically they have pretty much the same information you've got in open source. Uh, they still don't know for sure whether this was terrorist inspired or terrorist directed, so whether this was homegrown or actually directed by ISIS or, or Al Qaeda. Um, I think that will take a little while longer in terms of investigation. There is no specific threat against the United States, but obviously uh, we've seen our strongest ally, Britain, now hit three times. Uh, our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to them. Uh, but I think what you're seeing in Britain is a resoluteness, but also a recognition that as the British, who went through three decades of IRA-related terrorism, they will carry on, and uh, I think in many ways uh, that's what we need to do here in our country as well. The British Prime Minister, Theresa May, said there's far too much tolerance for extremism in the U.K. Do you think we have that problem here in the United States? I think we don't have it the same way as the U.K., but uh, it is a, obviously a challenge in modern society to maintain free societies and freedom of speech, but still recognize that we have to be on guard against some of the hateful venom that is oftentimes spewed over the internet. Why do you think it is that we see these attacks in London, uh, but we have not, knock on wood, seen such a thing happen here in the United States? I believe in many ways the uh, Muslim American community is better integrated into our society. They're, I think that's always been our secret sauce in America, that you can come here first generation and if you accept our laws and rules, become American. Uh, that has not always been the case in so many of the European countries, and I think we are seeing again, the benefits of that, and that's why it troubles me so much to see the kind of, the type of tweets that the president has put out in the last uh, 12 hours or so. Um, Prime Minister May also said that she thinks internet-based technology firms are giving extremism the safe space it needs to breed. She wants new regulations of cyberspace. Take a listen. We need to work with allied democratic governments to reach international agreements that regulate cyberspace to prevent the spread of extremist and terrorism planning. Facebook, Twitter, Google, do you think that uh, these tech firms are, are doing enough? Jake, I think, and in, in my background, as you know, was in technology business before I came in, went into politics. I think we, we do have to re-examine these platform companies that for years have said they have no responsibility to curate the information that flows across their platforms. They have started to change. Originally, they changed their policies as related to child pornography. Now they are changing their policies as related to terrorism. I was just out on the West Coast last week talking with folks at Facebook. They are now recognizing the weaponization of false information even around elections. They shut down 30,000 fake accounts right before the French elections. But this is going to require, I think, a much broader conversation than we've had to date. Uh, you have a lot of big hearings coming up. Uh, on Wednesday, you'll have the Director of National Intelligence, the head of the NSA, uh, the Acting Director of the FBI, and the Deputy uh, Attorney General. Uh, and then Thursday, of course, uh, the big one, uh, James Comey, uh, the former FBI Director. Um, do you have any indication whether President Trump will try to exert executive privilege to block Comey from testifying about their conversations? I would hope that he would not. I think he would be on shaky legal ground, to say the least. Director Comey was fired by the president, and you have the president himself making derogatory comments, in effect, uh, at least reported to the press, calling Comey a nut job in front of the Republicans, totally inappropriate. You know, the question in front of the, the Russians, I think. You know. In front of the Russians, yeah. right, which is, again, just regardless of what you feel about Comey, that's not how he should be treated. Uh, and the question we have, and I think most Americans have, is, you know, going back to Watergate, there's a series of rules that have kind of emerged out of Washington. One, that a president shouldn't ask about an ongoing investigation, particularly shouldn't ask if that investigation is connected to affiliates of the president. And it would be absolutely unthinkable if the president of the United States asked the FBI director to basically back off an investigation that was uh, directed at some of the affiliates of Mr. Trump. Hillary Clinton said something very interesting this week that reminded me of something that you said in, in a hearing uh, not long ago. She said that she believes that the Russians, in their interference in the U.S. election, must have been guided by Americans. Take a listen. 
the Russians, in my opinion, and based on the intel and counter intel people I've talked to, could not have known how best to weaponize that information unless they had been guided. And here's a here's guided one, by Americans, guided by Americans, and guided by people who had, you know, polling and data so who information. Is that, huh? is that true? Do you agree? This is one of the questions we have to sort through. Again, one of the questions I was asking when I was out on the West Coast. It does seem strange. It appears that Russian paid internet trolls who created bots were then able to put forward fake news, selected stories in a way that seemed targeted. Now, targeted at certain states? Targeted at certain states, at certain demographics. We don't have full proof of that. So I'm not where Secretary Clinton is in terms of jumping to a conclusion. But this is one of the many questions that we need to investigate. One of the big questions, of course, is, is there any evidence of collusion that you have seen yet? Is there? Listen, there is a lot of smoke. We have no smoking gun at this point, but there is a lot of smoke. And again, one of the questions that we will have, not only for Director Comey on Thursday, but on Wednesday for uh, Director of National Intelligence Coates and NSA, uh, National Sec uh, NSA Director Admiral Rogers, I'm going to want to ask them, because there have been reports that the president also talked to both of them in terms of asking them to downplay the Russian investigation. That would be very concerning to me. Have you heard any accusation yet that you think, if it is proven, in terms of what the president has said to either Coates or Admiral Rogers or James Comey, that if it's proven, it is uh, obstruction of justice? Jake, I went to law school, but I'm not a practicing attorney. I'll leave that for much better attorneys than I, but clearly it would be very, very troubling if the President of the United States is interfering in investigations that affect potentially the President and his closest associates. We have seen already um, the NSA director, uh, the, the NSA advisor, General Flynn, get fired because he didn't fully disclose his contacts with Russians. We've had the Attorney General Sessions have to recuse himself because he did not fully disclose his connections with Russians. We see other reports of Mr. Kushner having a series of contacts with, with Russians and others. And uh, the American people deserve to get to the bottom of this. And what I hope our committee is able to do, and we've, I'm very proud of the fact that it's maintained its bipartisan approach, is we're going to just follow the facts. We're not going to be you know, uh, taken out by some of these uh, one-off stories, we're going to continue to follow the facts. The FBI's probe of uh, the meddling is also looking at the Trump campaign's data analytics operation, which was overseen by Jared Kushner. Are you focusing on that? Listen, we're going to follow all of the facts in terms of what kind of contacts and whether the contacts were inappropriate between individuals affiliated with the Trump campaign and the Russians. There are contacts that were made before the election. There have been a series of uh, uh, stories about contacts between the election and the inauguration. And then we've got these very troubling reports about the president intervening and, in the case of Director Comey, fire him because uh, potentially because of his activities with the Russia investigation. Senator Mark Warner, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, thank as you. always.